Jason Warner Smith. Welcome back inside the crazy ant form, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Dude, it's Good been a be while. Back. Good to be back. Yeah, what well, the last time I think we spoke was uh pre COVID, pre before yeah. Oh way. Oh wait, yeah. Wait, yeah. Oh, last, man. last time we saw you was at your uh Blackbird play. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh, so good. Oh, Four years ago now? Yeah, so, yeah man. man. So it's been a while. We got a lot of catching up to do, man. <laughs> yes, we do. Let's yeah. let us catch. Yes. Let us catch. <laughs> well, you've been a busy guy, obviously. I mean, you know, COVID shut everything down for a while. But, I yep. mean, looking yep. at what you've got coming up and the things you've done since we've been able to get back to work and everything, you've been a busy yep. guy, man. So uh, we're going to talk all about all that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, what, most Great. recently, where the crawdads sing, right? We saw you there. If, if you don't blink, yep, yeah, I'm yeah. there, I'm there. In the first 10 minutes, yeah, I'm still there, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That, that was a lot of fun. I bet, man. And that Look, it's turned into a huge hit. I mean, it had some staying power yeah. at the box office and turned into a pretty good little little film for everybody. So that's well, good, man. They had a beautiful built-in audience. That book was on the number one bestseller list, blah, 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 for weeks and weeks and weeks and months oh, yeah. and months. And months. So, yeah, I mean, they would really have had to – screw that sucker up (laughs) and they made a good movie um i'm very happy to be a part of it proud to be a part of it it was a a fun job we're down we shot it in new orleans yeah that it was north carolina right (laughs) um, yeah and i got to meet a guy named bill kelly who plays the sheriff we became friends that was nice we spent a lot of time together and a lot of other cool things i got a lot of great stories and you know had a good time so good, awesome. man. That's really all you can ask for with projects, right? Just to have sure. a good experience and to have something you can carry on to, you know, tell yeah. a story down the line. Exactly. Exactly. I love that, though. And I mean, since we were, like I said, haven't talked since pre-COVID, what were you yeah. doing during that time? Were you trying to stay busy? I mean, I know it hurt a lot of actors, especially in Atlanta. Well, you know, uh, the the... I don't want to go too deep into this and waste a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Everybody. But my father had, I, both of my parents are still alive in their 80s. And my father had quadruple bypass surgery in oh, December wow. of 2019. Mm. So he was in rehab when COVID hit. And on March 13th, 14th, 15th, my mother had a tiny little, what they call an ischemic stroke or a mm. TIA stroke. Which right. is a blockage over here. And she ended up in the hospital. Wow. So dad's in rehab. Now mom's in the hospital. Then mom goes into rehab and COVID's going bananas. Right. Yeah, well, let's put it this way. We're going bananas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. About yeah. COVID. And she ended up. In, so anyway, I got my mom out of rehab on the 27th. My dad out on the 28th, right before they just started shutting everything yeah. down. So they got home. They were safe. That was handled. But... I was completely unemployed. I mm-hmm. uh, couldn't teach acting. Obviously, no acting work was happening right. anywhere. And so I kind of ended up being fortunate for me because I now had time to take care of my parents. Yeah. Mostly my mom. My dad was handled. He's married, has a wife, and he was okay. But my mom was solo, and my sister was helping as, all, as well. But I had all this time to help my mom. So it was very serendipitous. And due to the fact that they, you know, changed the unemployment laws, because normally a guy like me can't get unemployment. Right. And so I was able to. So I was able to survive. And so that's how I lived through, you know, the first six months of the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Um, And then once, I I would say in July of 2020, um, about... 10 of my students or more wanted to come back to acting class. They mm-hmm. were willing to take a chance. So I opened it up. We were very strict. You know, everybody sit far and apart. Right. And that kind of thing. So slowly that came back on board. And then 20, yeah. So I didn't work as an actor. I auditioned for some stuff starting in September of 2020. And I actually, I actually booked a role on, on Stranger Things, but it ended up conflicting with other jobs, so I couldn't do it. And a friend of mine ended up getting the part, so that was fine. It was a tiny part anyway, so I just wanted to be on the show. For sure. <laughs> and, yeah. And um, so then I didn't work. I mean, I, the acting kept building the, the teaching. It got stronger and stronger, and then everybody settled down. And by the middle of you know 2021, we were back to normal. Yeah. And, and then in 2021, I got really busy. 
I, I finally started working again as an actor, so that was good. We can talk about that if you want to. But. Heck yeah. Of course. That's <laughs> that what was it. I, just, I hung out with my wife and took care of my mom, and that was the, that was the pandemic for me. That's I, beautiful. I read, I read a lot of books. I, I discovered a new acting technique that's from the 1940s that nobody knew about, and I'm teaching it now. But nice. Other than that, that's about all I did. Yeah. I just love how you, it was all you took it all and you know you made a positive out of it like you said it, it just allowed you time to do what you needed to do with your parents yeah. and spend time and learn a new technique and just yeah. I mean right you got to you got to make it what it is and if you're able to turn it into a positive then hell yeah man good for you yeah, it was, it was, it was, there was a lot of boring time in there too, but <laughs> <For sure. laughs> it was positive yeah I'm glad that's all done with us as far as I'm concerned. Oh, so. hell yeah. Oh, most yeah. definitely, man. Most definitely. We also yeah. saw you pop up in Candy as well. I thought that was a great appearance and a very oh, eerie show, man. I I knew nothing about the premise and nothing about <laughs> the story. <laughs> and when I like dive, dove in, I was like, oh my goodness. Like it, it just yeah. kind of took me by surprise. Was that shot in Atlanta yeah. as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. And actually that was a movie. It was a TV series, a mini series. Yeah. And we actually shot that in February okay. of this year. And yeah. We got it on the air by May, I think it was. Wow. April, May. Yeah, they did it fast. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's quick. Yeah. Turnaround. But the people who made it, uh, so Jessica Beale and Michelle Purple, mm -hmm. their, their production company is called Iron Ocean. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go back about six years, I made a movie, excuse me, I made a movie called. Uh, the Book of Love is what they ended up calling it, and it was produced by Michelle Purple and Jessica Biel. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Starred Jessica Biel, Jason Sudeikis, Maisie Williams. I had a supporting role in it. There were Paul, uh, Paul Reiser was in there, too, and some other folks, you know, uh, Orlando Jones was in there. Oh, wow. And nobody's seen this movie much it's it's an okay film <laughs> yeah but i made it you know and, and michelle's husband bill purple directed it mm -hmm. and he does a lot of tv work and, now and so this was kind of a passion project anyway it didn't really go anywhere as far as i know not many people have heard of it but fast forward to well so then november of last year i was down in new orleans working on uh a movie called Emancipation, which we can talk about. It's the Will Smith movie. Yeah, yeah. Damn. And um, <laughs> so it hasn't come out yet. I uh, wonder why. Um, so I auditioned for Candy. Mm -hmm. for a, actually, I auditioned for the role that Bruce McKinnon ended up playing in the show. Bruce was from Rectify. We were friends. Right. We were still friends. And in a hotel room down in New Orleans with my other actor buddies from Emancipation, and nothing came of it. Never heard anything. I'm like, oh well, say lovey, you know. Right. These are people I know. I wish I, I would. Come February, my agent calls and says, "Hey man, uh, the guys from uh, Candy want you to to play the district attorney. Uh, you start Monday." I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, how, is it big part? He goes, uh, I don't know, man. I haven't seen the script. I'm like, well, uh, can I? Yeah, right. But, <laughs> and then I get the script. I'm like, holy crap, man! This is like a huge part. They just handed me. Yeah. And they were like, oh, and when I talked to and, and I talked to Jessica and and she's like, and and Michelle and um and and JT and all these guys. Right. They were like, Look, man, we thought you were great in that movie. We enjoyed hanging out with you, and we found out we were in Atlanta. We just wanted to make sure, like, hey, there's this guy named Jason that lives here. Make sure we put him in the in the TV show somewhere. Yeah. Oh. And that's and I've never had anything like that happen. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> and so I was very like, oh, this is you know, no. It was just, <laughs> I feel like there are so many worse things that could be than having Jessica and JT right. going to bat for you, like. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I was just like, thank you, you know, because yeah, right. it's funny. I went. I went to uh, the film, The Book of Love, premiered at Tribeca back in 2017 or something. 18. I don't know when it was. And I went up there. I spent a bunch of money out of my own pocket. Went to see the premiere, and it was fun. I had a lot of fun. I got my picture made with all those people, and and I had a, I hired a publicist. I did everything right. Um, and then it was weird though because I didn't realize that Tribeca is not Sundance. Tribeca, everybody wears a suit, and I showed up in a t-shirt and a motorcycle jacket. Oh shit! Like, so, you know, I'm like, oh shit. So anyway, um, so. I'm there, and it's like there's Jason Sudeikis and Olivia Wilde 
and there's JT and Jessica Beal, and I'm in the green room with all these people and Maisie Williams and who knew me because I played her uncle, so we knew each other. Right. right. These guys I didn't work with; they weren't even in the same scenes with me. But they, I get, and so they're probably like, "Who?" You know, but I'm like, I will never see these people ever again. <laughs> this is so cool, and it's like you know, and here you got Jessica Beal and Olivia Wilde. It's like, my God, I thought they were pretty on the screen. Good God, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm like, I'm trying not to like, ah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, and then the next day they were like, "Hey man, JT comes and goes. Hey man, uh, I know it was a little bit. Uh, didn't talk to you last night. I, you're great in the movie, man." And I was like, he didn't even know who I was. Right. You know? All the movies. Like, oh, that's the guy. You know. So he couldn't have been nicer. And so we went to the movie again the second night, and it was much more casual. And anyway, I'm like, all right, that's it. Nice to have met you all. Never see you again. Bye. You know. And then. February of 2022. Here we all are again. Yeah, right. Boom! Like, wow. Nice. And then when I left that set, I'm like, I'll never see y'all again. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Just wait. It's exactly. happening. Wait, it's gonna just happen. Wait. They're gonna hear this and they're calling you like That's tomorrow. Right. That's fucking. Hey, here you are right now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I love that though. And man, something that I gotta tell you, it, we still refer back to your first interview on the podcast with us. We tell actors that, you know, we had this guest on who he wasn't the right part for this certain role, talking about your role on The Walking Dead. But oh, yeah. the casting director kept his photo and kept his resume and just was waiting for the right part to come up, to come up. Yep. So now we like to talk talk about how it's the the art of selection and not the art of rejection. So, I mean, uh, that is something that's completely perfect. built off of your first interview. And so I just wanted you oh, to know wow. that that's how much of an impact you made on us and our audience to this podcast. Oh. So we appreciate oh, you. For sure. Because I think one of the important lessons that we learned from talking to you is that like the audition is the job. Mm -hmm. That's that's the job. You're you're going to exactly work, you're correct. auditioning, and that's the job. Whether you get it or not, you showed up, you did your best, that's your job, you move on to the next gig. And if you look at it that way, and then you realize, like Logan said, it's not rejection, it's selection. And at some point somebody's gonna select you, you know, that's yeah. how you gotta approach it. And and I, we learned yeah. that from you, and we it was just I, and, you know, and we pass that along to as many people as we can. Well, because yeah. that's how you gotta do it it you know so uh yeah. kudos man kudos oh well, thanks man yeah i mean it's I, I i tell the same thing to my students it's like you know do the math figure out how much money you made from the jobs you did book and divide that by the number of auditions and now you know how much you're getting paid for every audition right right that's exactly if, right if that'll give you a positive mindset for the audition do that yeah you know? <laughs> Always whatever it takes I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's really epic because I feel like, you know, the more our audience grows, the more they learn about everything because, you know, we've expanded the show to like an industry news segment and talking about the box office and the type of numbers that each film makes every week. And okay. just to hear that insight on, you know, their process on how to get started and how to keep their mental health high because that's something we've been talking about on the show a lot as well, talking about mental health and in an, um, in an industry like this, trying to stay oh, yeah. positive and keep going. So we didn't talk about with that with you the first time. So what is your mental health process when approaching this stuff? You know, uh, that's a that's a very that's a deep question, man. <laughs> we we try we try. You know, we've also switched up to the Barbara Walters mode. You know? <laughs> I see, I see. I am an oak tree. Thank you. Um, I don't know. You know, again, look, I'm going to repeat what we've already said, that the audition is the job. And, you know, people way famouser than me and more important than me have said the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know, Brian Cranston, Michael Keaton, people like that talk about that very same thing. And once you have that mindset, then, you know, you'll be okay. But I think that the the... The thing that keeps me going and the thing that I try to pass along to my students is it's about process over product. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I, I learned a fancy word for that the other day. Telic versus atelic. Oh. It has to do with Aristotle or something. Look it up, okay? Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> it's a fancy way of saying the exact same thing. Right. So, you 
if you're if you are serious about being an artist, whether it be an actor, a painter, a, a, a guitarist, whatever it might be, you know, and, and I would say sports, an mm. athlete, you're an artist of sorts. Mm -hmm. If you're serious about that, you better love all of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Going to class, doing a play, auditioning, not getting the part. <laughs> right. Getting the part. Right. <laughs> working the job, ending the job. I mean, the hardest part, you know, what's, you know, there's all kinds of hard parts. Mm -hmm. Not the hardest part. That's the wrong word. But a thing that people don't think about is when a job is over. Mm hmm. Especially if you get lucky, like I mean, when I, this is my story, I always tell. I went and uh, when I did American Made, I'm, and we went to Colombia, South America, Medellin for mm -hmm. you know Medellin, as they say down there, for two weeks. I mean, I got picked up in a limo, flown first class, picked up by a driver. I had a someone that I could just walk out the hotel, and there was a line of cars, and I'd just be like, "Take me here," and just you know. And everything was safe. It wasn't, you know, it was five star hotels. Everything was perfect. I worked three days. Yeah. If you want to call it work. Right. I was there for two weeks. I was on vacation, basically, and getting paid really well. And then flown back home, and a limo brought me home. And I got out of that limo, and my wife's like, hey, the garbage needs to go out. <laughs> the toilet's running again. And it's just like, yeah. you know, and it, it's over. It's over. And now you're unemployed again right that's it but you had this high 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 and then and so a lot of people that's you know i think that's what movie stars that get all weird that's that's the hard part is that you're 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 oh yeah so you've got to have something going on all the time mm -hmm. like getting up monday through friday nine to five going to work for most people if you're going to be an artist you got to have a routine you got to have a process you got to have the thing that and you got to like it and I have students of mine who will remain nameless over the years yeah. that don't like the process. Mm -hmm. All they're interested in is the part, the mm. booking, the job, the Instagram, the blah, blah, blah. Right. And they burn out. They're, they go crazy. They quit. They don't do the homework. They just they try to do the minimum, and they're, and they're miserable people. And it's right. like, this is not going to work out for you. Yeah. How do you try to prevent that for them? Like, how do you try to get them back to? I, you know, again, that's that's the kind of thing where you can lead the horse to water, but yeah, it's. It, it, I I just have to talk about it and tell them, and I say, you know, here's daily exercises that you can do. You should be watching these movies that you've never heard of, and that's the thing about being the age I am. <laughs> Not all of my students are in their twenties, but I have a lot of students in their younger years, and right. I I referenced a line from Young Frankenstein the other day, and they were all like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, oh, God, all right, put this on your list, right, Don't right, right. Right. Being there with Peter Sellers, uh, you know, just I mean, every week I'm like, you need to watch this, you need to watch this. And, you know, it's like quit watching Thor for the 15th time. Go right. Watch. That's right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I get it. I love the Marvel movies, too. But it's like you need to mix it up. Yeah. Well, thank you for connection. validating my my father dome because and and her mother dome because my daughter who's like young twenties knows Young Frankenstein's one of her favorite movies ah. she loves it well so done. yes yeah well done, sir. <laughs> she can even quote it so like yeah so thank well, you well <laughs> if you watch Young Frankenstein you can quote it exactly sure. exactly <laughs> um, so that's what I mean I just tell them I said you need to just dive into the kool-aid and drown in it and yep. if you don't want to do that figure out something else yeah Good point exactly you, know, you might you might have a career because you got lucky mm -hmm. all of us get lucky that all these things that happen have a lot of luck involved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know the old saying you know preparedness is when what luck is when preparedness meets opportunity and all that kind of bullshit but you know what i'm saying right you, right you got to be ready and and if you're not having fun if you don't enjoy getting ready find something else to do That's right. well we want to make sure we talk about the short film because we're super pumped about the short film but you brought oh, it yeah, up I'm and i just want to touch on it just a little bit because Please, the opposite side of no, 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 no. The, the opposite side of you know the good luck 
is the bad luck. Sometimes you do everything right and it's oh. just out of your control. Like when you brought up everything. Emancipation. You do everything right. It's a great film. It's got a stellar <laughs> cast. Who the fuck knows if it's even going to see the light of day because of a stupid slap? I mean, so... They spent way too much money. They're going to let that movie... Yeah. Out. <laughs> there you go. But That, movie, that movie's coming out. <laughs> somewhere. Yes, yes. But the, the point being is, like, you don't know, right? You, you no. can do everything right. There are still things that can be out of your control that happen that just... That's life, man. And, and you got to oh. roll with that, too, right? Well, I, I'm very much at the philosophy that everything is out of your control except your reaction to the things that happen to you. I'm there you go. Stoic mindset, the, the lack of free will, blah, blah, blah. We, that'll, just, that's a whole five-hour interview. <laughs> right there. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's another movie I made, The Birth of a Nation. Mm. Yeah. It's going to be Oscar, you know, it's going to be boom, 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 and then the whole Nate Parker bullshit yep. came out of you know, because somebody was after him and just... Yep. Yeah. Yep. I didn't do that. It's just, <laughs> exactly. It's kind of yeah. like a victim of so, circumstance situation. Well, yeah. I mean, I was lucky to be there. I was happy to be there. I had a lot of fun working on it, and it's a great movie that a lot of people love. But, you know, and now Emancipation, same thing. It's like, what yeah. the hell? Exactly. Man, every, time I, every time I play a slave owner, something bad happens. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so, boy. That's hey, another hey, conversation. This is what the white guys do in those movies, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's All talk the, about the current one. Let's talk about the project, okay. the short film. Tell everybody the name of it. it it's called Chipper. Chipper. And I know, yeah, I know. And we really wrestled with that name, and we didn't want to use it, and then we did want to use it, but it has to do with one of the main characters. Okay. It's a name. Okay. okay? I know everybody's like, oh, that's your buddy in the wood chipper there? You know, that's, <laughs> that's straight where they go. But it's important to the story. And okay. so when you see it, you'll go, uh, oh, I see why it's called that. Fantastic. So t t tell us about it. Like, tell everybody okay. about the project. Well, what, which got going? It is a 20-minute long short film. So the trouble is, is very little I can tell you because there's just... <laughs> no, right, it's right there. Anyway. <laughs> um, well, the lo let's see if I can get the log line. Um, a man receives a letter, a mysterious letter from his father, and he returns home... Uh, because the letter reveals a, a, a long-held dark family secret. Ooh. Something like that. That's yeah. the best I can give you. I mean, if I tell you any more, you might as well not watch it. <laughs> right. it's, it's 20 minutes long. It's a short film, and it's we made it for the festival circuit, which exactly. I just applied to nine festivals in the last week. There yes, you go. We completely understand, because we told you how we're filmmakers ourselves, and actually, yeah. during the pandemic, we shot our first short film, and oh, we were fantastic. able to get, th thank you, we were able to get that out there, and get that on the festival circuit, and uh, it was an cool. amazing experience. Yeah. I want to see it. Well, of course. yeah, man, we'll send you the link, you can watch it for sure. I want to see your movie. What's Hell your yeah. movie called? It's called Deadlines, man. It's called Deadlines. Deadlines. Yeah, right, it's a uh, it. pretty intense drama that deals with uh, mental health and suicide and uh, racism. And it's pretty intense, man. But uh, yeah, <laughs> well, that's a way to jump in for the directorial right. debut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but de we appreciate that, man. We will definitely send well, you the link for sure. The best I can, and one more, I can give you one more, please do. Uh, one more nugget is it deals with what I'm dealing with, which is aging parents mm. that's that's the that's the i'm not giving anything away there yeah I well, think now so. i'm even more curious right like, yeah I'm, I'm excited do we have like an estimate like when possibly like well um we've applied we're applying now to festivals that will be in 2023 okay okay yeah so you know i think the first one might be March or April. Okay. Okay. We, w we were going to be at the Rome, Georgia International Film Festival because my I have some friends that run it and they were nice enough to get us in after the deadline. And then we reconsidered because that would be our international, national, and Georgia premiere. And, we, and I love my buddies at Rome International Film Festival. <laughs> However, it's not Atlanta. It's not... You know, Tribeca. Right. Is not, you know, so we're like, guys, we're going to hold that and just just in case. Yeah, what you know. Slightly larger festival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take us in. So, yeah, I mean, today, I mean, I can look it up, but I think we applied to San Francisco, Florida, 
um, South by Southwest. Nice. Uh, we were kind of late on that one, but we got it in. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Dead Center, which is in Oklahoma. Um, you guys probably know. Oh, yeah. Way. Running the route, man. <laughs> so it's going to cost a lot of money because, you know, it's outside the budget. But, um, yeah, so we, we shot the, the quick the quick down and dirty of the movie. Oh, crap. Sorry about that. Let me turn my email. No, you're oh, fine. you're good. Um, That's JT and Jessica. I mean. <laughs> hey, there they are. <laughs> Never. Not <laughs> um, I did send them a note, but I had to go through their you know, agent to send it to them. Of uh, course, of course. Anyhow, so in 2016, I wanted to make a short film that featured me mm-hmm. as, a, as a nice character, right? Not a full slave owner or a psychopath in prison or whatever. Right. This is before... Well, I'd shot American Made at that time, but it hadn't come out yet. But, you know, I just wanted to be a lead role uh, who was a nice guy. Right. Or some, you know, a hero. A hero. And so I put it out on Facebook. And uh, my friends, Ruckus and Lane Sky, uh, who I didn't really know that well at the time, we had almost worked on two other projects and they all fell through. And they wrote back and said, hey, we'll write you a script. And I'm like, great. So we met and had coffee. And told them all of my stupid ideas that I don't, I don't even remember now. And they go like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Hey, Jason, uh, <laughs> what scares you? Mm. And I said, oh, uh, my parents getting old, and they're like, we'll get back to you. Nice. Two weeks later, I had a script. Wow, nice. And, yeah, and they're like, here you go. You can have this. You can do whatever you want with it. Unless you start making big changes, you don't need to bother us. Just have fun. So it was written as a showcase for me. Um, it only has uh, a, a, a total of five characters. It takes place on one location. It's easy, mm-hmm. you know, cheap to shoot. For sure. And we shot the whole thing in three days. Um, so I was all fired up about it, and then I lost interest. I got busy with The Walking Dead. All my, my things started happening. I was like, oh, I really don't need this movie anymore. But then, you know, I kept thinking, like, I'd really like to make this movie. I'd really like to. And then when the thing happened with my mom and dad, I'm like, I really need to make this movie. For right? sure. And so eventually, long story short, I met this guy after many other people almost made this movie for me. A uh, young man named Sean, uh, Sean McClain, because I was in a play with him two years ago called uh, The Laramie Project in Our Town. We did it in Rep here in Atlanta mm-hmm. uh, two years ago. And. And we made friends, and then he took my class for a short while, and then he heard, you know, I was trying to get this project made, and he, kept, he goes, well, I could, I could make your project. I'm like, well, you can. And so anyway, long story short, he pulled the crew together. I got the cast together, and a friend of mine named Rob Mello mm-hmm. bought us some money, and we made a movie. Nice. We shot it in June, and today, today... September 29th, it's finished. There you go. Fantastic. I got the final product today. Nice. Many, many edits and changes and the sound and music. Oh, yeah. We know that. And we did it for $20,000. So Nice. Nice. Congratulations, man. We we did it as a micro budget, so we had to stop at 20. So thank God. I'm sure we could have spent a lot more. But yeah. <laughs> we were right there with you, man. We completely yeah. understand. <laughs> but we're super so, excited about it, though. Thank you. And I, I wish I could tell you more about it. But Yeah, no, we totally. We completely understand. But when it have does come out, world? we have not seen the trailer yet. Okay, I will send you the trailer, yes. and you can throw it on here if you want to. And there's For some sure. shots in, from our EPK. I can send you the EPK. Nice. Which, by the way, the EPK does have a synopsis in there, so... Uh, okay. Uh, you don't want to read it. <laughs> you don't want to read it. <laughs> Keep it uh, nice uh, nice and tidy, but you know... That's but, up to you. Of course. This is the movie. so good. All right. <laughs> anyway, but it's called Chipper. Uh, the, the working title was Ashes to Ashes, and we just... That title just didn't make sense after we made the movie, so we changed it to Chipper. All right. Completely understand. Yeah. Completely understand. Well, listen, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and coming to get crazy with us again. Yeah, I mean, man. Dude, you're yeah. awesome. 
Like well, literally thanks, anytime, anytime you want to come back on, you know, you're more than welcome. Like I said, oh, we have you. multiple segments now for the podcast. So we talk about the industry news. We can talk, you can come on for that. We do a top five segment, you know, every single week it's different. This week it's top five heroines, you know, either fictional characters or real life females who are making an impact in our lives, who we think are inspirational women who we look up to. So, and it just changes entertainment based. And uh, yeah, man, like I said, anytime, you're always welcome. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Of course. Or hell, we'll just have to take the four-hour drive down and come have a drink with you, shit. Yeah. (laughs) Come on down. (laughs) I'm always down for coming to Atlanta, shit. I mean. (laughs) Well, just quickly tell everybody where they can follow you on social media, because you know it's all about social media. Uh, Yeah. So on Facebook, it's my name, Jason, J-A-Y-S-O-N, Warner Smith. On uh, Instagram and Twitter, if you're so bold, it's Jason with that Y in it again. Jason W. Smith. And that's about it. All right, man. For yeah, sure. I, I'm it. old. I don't do the TikTok and all that other stuff. <laughs> we so. all good. We'll, we'll direct everybody your way. And again, thank you so much for your time. And we can't wait to talk to you again, brother. I'll send you that link to our film, too. Very good. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right just like i don't know he's literally the working man's actor oh for sure i i just he's so chill yeah he just he he knows that hey this is the gig this is how it works this is what it's doing and i i love that though he has an acting course and Mm -hmm. that he's teaching people how to do it because i just think that's the single best way to pass along the knowledge that he's gained and like hey guys if you want to do it this is how you do it oh completely agree